Hey guys, happy Monday. On this video, we're gonna be going over uh, intro to wiring. We do lots of custom wiring here at LCR Performance, and this is actually the harness that I'm building for our shop car, my Nova. So, where do you start with a harness? Anyone who's ever done wiring before. When you get a harness from Haltech, Holly, FuelTech, whoever, they have their terminated or unterminated harnesses. The difference between the two, obviously one has connectors on it, one doesn't. For a custom harness, you need to have a flying lead unterminated harness. If you have a terminated harness, they don't know where your coils are always all the time. They don't know where some of your sensors are and whatnot. So when you have an unterminated harness, it saves that step of having to depin the whole harness, cut all the connectors off. You're just wasting time in connectors and pins. And they're, they're more money than an unterminated harness. So whenever I get a car in, our shop car, there's a lot of planning that goes into wiring a vehicle. So the main thing is, first off, what do I need to wire? Where is everything? So first we lay out everything in the car, put everything that is in there, the motor, the rat, everything that, and my sensors where they're gonna stay from the front to the back. So on our car where we started is I draw out these diagrams. So if you look here, the first one here, this is pretend it's the firewall of the car and the car's towards you. So you're gonna say, holy crap, there's a lot of stuff here. Yep, and that's my point of how you need to decide how to do your harness. So on this harness here, we're using a mil spec connector, a Deutsch one. So this one has 61 pins on it. So from here, I need to decide, okay, now, okay, I got my oil pressure here, I got my cam sensor, my O2 sensor, my other one, and so on, my injectors, and it keeps on going down all the way here. So you need to decide where everything's going, and then after, what we decide then is, we go in the harness itself and lay it all out for how the ECU is actually going to connect everything and control it all. So if you notice here, my oil pressure is C10, my oil temp is C11, cam sensor and so on, and everything's designated to a pin, every single one. And here sensor ground, sensor 5 volt, and whatnot all the way. So then I will be laying out my harness and taking measurements on the next video of where everything is so I know how long my wires are. In this harness here, we're going to be doing something called concentric twisting. What is that? What that is is actually twisting the wires as you build the harness and have your breakouts. Why is that beneficial? In those harnesses, there's no wire that is longer or shorter to put stress in the harness. If you don't do that, you'll have your wires Obviously, just like track and field, the closest lane is the shortest and the farthest is the longest. Well, it's the same thing in a harness and wiring. So when you actually concentric twist it all, there's no stress in the harness, which prevents pins from pulling out. I've seen it happen where wires have actually stretched and the copper is actually broken in the harness. That's what we do with this harness and this one will be wrapped in Raychem DR25. Raychem DR25 is a heat resistant heat sleeve that we use. That's only on the higher end harnesses. It's very expensive and you have to plan everything the way that it's done as you build your harness compared to if you would just use your heat shrink and normal loom that you could use. So for here we have a firewall that is running everything here. Our next one is our firewall foot wells. Well, what I did here is, this is basically my lower stuff that's in the car. So my coils are actually on the frame rails, my line locks by the master cylinder, my shock sensors, my front wheel speed sensor, water pump and fans. So this is not gonna be coming from the top of the firewall, this is gonna be coming lower and out these both sides here. The reason why I did that on this car, I didn't want the look of the spider coming all the way down and to the sides. I want it straight out the side there so it's nice and clean. Those will be on other connectors too. And nice and clean that way. Now we go to the inside of the car. Now we're opposite. So now this is the firewall to the back of the car. So now we have everything. This is where my ECU is and the other connections I have to route to it. My shifter, transmission, drive shaft, tire temp, track temp, 
then my other fuel pumps in the back that I'll have. And this is the driver, so an ignition switch. My can keypad's going to be here. Driver rotary, I'm installing that too. Once again, each one is labeled to a certain pin. As you can see, that's all done that way. So, same thing, I'll be taking measurements of where everything goes. And then I build my whole harness. So, the reason why we have to do that is the whole harness will have a main trunk and branches off that. You're not going to have eight, ten different trunks going and it just looks terrible. And it's so much cleaner even when you concentric twist it all, the harness actually becomes smaller than if you would just lay them side by side and then they crisscross. So now once you have your diagram to correspond to those pins, Haltech actually has their diagrams all laid out and color matched to all their actual pins from the A, B, C, D and their four pin connector E. But what I like to do is, just on Excel I've made these, is each connector I have everything where everything goes per pins, per outputs and everything. On this, as you can see, the different highlighters are for the engine. The remove, which will go on the harness, I'll show you which ones I didn't need, so I remove those. The rear and the mid. So I do this so that I can plan my harness out once it's actually in the car and I can lay it out that I know where these pins all go and it's just easier, I'm more of a visual person so it's easier for me to see that. So now I go through all my pins to make sure it all corresponds and actually works because I'm guilty of this. I used to build harnesses like this on paper and then you actually go in the computer program and realize, oh crap, that actual pin is something else. It's actually an SPI instead of an AVI input. So once I build all this, I actually go in the program and lay it all out so that I know that that can actually work on the ECU once it's in the car compared to doing this and having to change pins around. So that's the main thing that we're at right now for the first part of the video of how, we, how to build a harness. Once we get to this, now I'll show you when you get the harness what we do with that. So now, we're going to start with when you get your harness from Haltech. Comes in this nice duffel bag. Very daunting to the carburetor boys when you take a look at it. There's a lot going on in here. Once again, this is the same color coding that we talked about in the previous video that corresponds in the ECU to the harness. So when we get the harness like this, we don't just throw it in the car and start wiring. So what I do is I actually separate the whole harness into the separate connectors and remove the wires that are per the drawing that I just showed you. And I'll show you what it looks like after we depin everything. Now I have the whole harness taken apart in the way that I want it per the four connectors, A, B, C, D. And then the 25 amp uh, connectors I have separate right now. So we have everything here. You have your cam and crank. You have all your high current outputs, your injectors, your other injector harness, your wide band. So to most people, this still looks like messy. To me, it's a controlled mess. You, the best way with wiring is you take it step by step. Don't look at the whole harness like this and think that you're gonna wire this thing up and lickety split. It's not going to happen. It's going to look terrible and you're going to have a nightmare at the racetrack or on the street wherever you use your vehicle. So everything else here is taken apart. For how much 5 volt and all the other sensor wires that they actually give you, we weighed it and if you can believe this is four and a half pounds just here. Where the way that I like running it is one wire will be the bulkhead and then you just separate it on the other side. So you'll, I'll probably be able to save probably at least two pounds. And people say, oh, what's two pounds here, two pounds there? You'd be amazed how much that adds up. And if that means the driver can eat what he wants, then it's worth it. So the main thing is though, keeping it clean. And also at the end of the, we do the whole harness. I'll show you, we do something called the continuity test. What that is, is basically checking the pins at the ECU to wherever it goes in the harness. To this, it'll be the bulkhead, so we'll check it there, and then check it to the sensors or wherever they have to go. Why would you do that? 
I've dealt with this before, and that's one thing we do in the shop, me and both Connor agreed to this, that we continuity check every harness we build now. Because you throw a harness in the car, and if you have issues with it, now where do you even start? Electrical gremlins, I've heard this time and time again at the racetrack, that, well, it worked before. Well, no, it didn't, because now you have issues. So when you continuity check the whole harness, then you know that actual connection from the ECU to the sensor to wherever it has to go is complete. So really you should throw it in the car and it should work no problem. And the nice part is too doing the firewall bulkhead like we're doing is if we had another motor or I have a fire underneath the hood, the harness will only get destroyed hopefully and if it does in the actual engine bay. So there's a cutoff point of where I can actually redo the harness or have actual more harnesses built to suit for other vehicles too also so thank you very much for watching we will try to give you step by step on how we do wiring some other people might do it different but this is the way we do it and it seems to work for us so we appreciate you guys watching and we'll hopefully see you guys in the next video